Hey, Skills Champions, this is Rachel Unruh, Chief of External Affairs at National Skills Coalition, back again this week for Skills on the Hill with our Managing Director of Government Affairs, Katie Spiker. Hey, Katie. Hi, Rachel. Um, so we had a great update from you last week on what's happened with uh, the effort to reach a bipartisan infrastructure deal. What's happened since we talked last week? Yeah, there's been some progress in the bipartisan uh, infrastructure deal. Uh, it's got an awful acronym that people are using, BIF, uh, but we can use bipartisan infrastructure deal. Um, so the there's been progress in the, the Senate. They uh, passed a, a procedural process. They, they invoked cloture, so they're moving forward on, on actually voting on the bill. Um, there's still no text out on the infrastructure deal. Um, but they're going to try and get uh, the the broader infrastructure package passed by this by the end of this week, and then they'll the Senate will head out on um, uh, recess. Once once the Senate does vote and pass, if we get there, if nothing in the the text when in the bill text when they release it is is problematic to either side, um, then then the bill will kick over to the House. Um, in the House, they're tying the infrastructure package to the, the reconciliation package um, from a timing perspective a little bit more than is happening in the Senate right now. So let's pause for a second. Um, can you just walk us through, again, sort of the difference between the infrastructure bill and the reconciliation package? The infrastructure bill is a bipartisan effort that's being negotiated by a small group of, of Republican Democratic senators in the White House. It would encompass those hard infrastructure components that are normally included in um, uh, service transportation bill, roads, bridges. There's also some that would include broadband and, and water infrastructure. It does not include the components of the American Jobs Plan and the America's Family Plan. The two priorities from the that we saw out of out of the White House and the administration earlier this year that included those investments for workforce, for free community college, for helping people access childcare and get back into the workforce. Those priorities um, will be packaged together as part of a reconciliation effort um, that that the Democrats are working on and that is is flowing kind of simultaneously. The work is getting done simultaneously with the negotiations around the bipartisan infrastructure deal. Great. And so what's um, the likelihood of uh, these things moving in the House? What's what's kind of at play there? Yeah. Um, so like we said, after the after the infrastructure deal, if and after the infrastructure deal passes, Senate will kick out of, over to the House. Instead of just passing that deal separately, though, the House will probably hold on to it so that they can negotiate the components of what will be part of a, a Dem-led reconciliation package. Um, the part of this is that Speaker Pelosi is managing some of the priorities of her caucus. So you've got the more progressive side of the, the Democratic caucus who may want to spend more, who want to ensure that they're um, are more investments made in, in priorities that Republicans are not prioritizing as part of the bipartisan infrastructure package. Um, and at the same time, she's got to manage the um, priorities of more moderate members um, who would be challenged in, in midterm next year if they if there was spending, if there was too high of spending levels. Got it. Um, so you mentioned that the Senate needs to act before the weekend. Um, no text yet. What happens if they don't act before recess? So there's a there's a joke right that um, every week is infrastructure week um, under the last administration and this administration. Um, but I, I think that really there's been all this momentum in the negotiations right now to get to a point where a group of Republicans and Democrats agree that the that bipartisan package is gonna is gonna meet the needs that we need in order to to rebuild and repair our, our infrastructure. Um, and I think that some of that momentum gets lost if they're not able to pass something before members go home for August recess. Um, just yesterday, Senator Manchin made comments that, um, that in his mind, the bipartisan infrastructure deal and any reconciliation efforts um, are inseparable. And I think that for, for a member who's both involved in the bipartisan infrastructure negotiations and a key vote for Senate Democrats on a reconciliation package because of the moderate role that, that Senator Manchin uh, plays, 
um, I think that that signaling that these two really need to, to move in conjunction just shows that that if we don't get a bipartisan infrastructure deal that passes before uh, members go home on August recess, it's just going to make any work done over August recess, putting together bill language and, and negotiating among the Democrats what they're going to spend under a reconciliation deal that much harder because they're not going to be able to, for moderates like Senator Manchin, point to and provide that kind of bipartisan effort um, that they successfully passed before then going to a more partisan process through reconciliation. Um, I think that that him being the moderate and then um, really on the House side, there's there's some uh, some similar dynamics for, for Speaker Pelosi and thinking about what a group of, of members called frontliners uh, need to see. So um, uh, folks are going into tight election cycles um, and and really balancing across the needs of both those more moderate members and members who have those tight elections with, with Republicans um, and, uh, and getting an infrastructure deal gives them the kind of uh, background and foundation to pass the more partisan reconciliation effort. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Um, so as you said, uh, folks will be going into recess uh, next week for August recess. Uh, we'll be back here, Katie, you and I, uh, to tell folks what happened. And also, uh, Katie's going to give you a preview of what's been happening with WIOA conversations in Congress. So we're looking forward to that. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Rachel.